So two more common ideas that we're going to be addressing in this video are the idea of finding missing terms. So, uh, well, let's, let's list both ideas that I want to go over. Uh, one of them is find the missing term. Uh, and the other is find the location of a particular term. Okay, so these are the ideas we'll be going over here. So let's say I've got an arithmetic sequence, and I want to know where a certain term is located. So let's just let's just uh, start with something here. Um, so number one, we're going to say I have an arithmetic sequence, and all I know about it is that the first term in the sequence is negative 28. And I also know that the common difference is 5. Uh, I want to know uh, location of the value 47 in the sequence, okay? So let's use our explicit formula. That's basically what you're going to use for everything. We just start with the one formula we know, a n equals uh, a1 plus n minus 1 times d, and I'm going to say a n equals 47. I don't know what n is. I'm just saying whatever n is, it's a location in this list of numbers, and let's just take 47 and put it in for a n. Okay, so I'm saying 47 equals, let's say, 1, that's negative 28. I'll just keep filling in the rest of the stuff we know. I don't know n, okay, but I do know everything else. Now, what, what I've done here is I've said, uh, look, I don't know what n is, but it's a location somewhere in this list. And that location has the number 47 at it. So that's why I put the number 47 in there for an. And now we just kind of work through the math here. Uh, let's see. We um, Am I doing something terribly wrong here? I am doing something terribly wrong. Hold up. That is not negative 20. Come on, Murphy. Okay, that's a 5. Difference is 5. So now we're adding 28 to both sides, right? I just want to solve the equation, figure out what n is. So 60, 75. I get 75 equals n minus 1 times 5, divide each side by 5, 15 equals n minus 1, uh, add 1 to each side, we get n equals 16. So in other words, what that means is a16 equals, uh, not 75, a16 equals negative 28. No, that's number 1. What was I looking for again? Oh, 47. Clear as day, right? Yeah. Uh, 47 is in the sequence. It's the 16th term of the sequence. Okay. Uh, let's try to do better. Second question here. I want to know what the missing terms are of a sequence. So let's just uh, pull up a little sequence here, and here we go. So here's my sequence. Negative 14 is the first term. There's the second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, and then it gets to the number 16. Okay, so I have a sequence where, well, we can see right here that's a1, and we can see over here that's a6, but I don't know any of the things in the middle, and I would love to, because that's what it's asking me to do. So here's how we do it. Um, someone mentioned in class that maybe we should find an average Right? And that'll point us to the middle of the sequence. Well, that's a great idea. When you have something like this, uh, let's say we have a number here. I'm just going to make up stuff. 47 seems to be on my mind for some reason. Uh, and let's leave a blank there. And then the number, I don't know, 100 and 1,001. Okay? So here we have two numbers. What's in the middle? Well, you just take the average of these two numbers and you can do it. But that works because it's an odd number of terms. Uh, the reason this isn't going to work so well for us up here in this example is because if you count 1, 2, um, 3, 4, 5, that's 5 jumps. So what's halfway in between 5 jumps? Well, the average of 16 and negative 14 would be like somewhere in the middle between A3 and A4. So averages is a good idea sometimes. It's not going to work in this case. Let's fall back on the explicit formula, which we're going to use like every time. And... 
I'll just write that down here. A n equals a one plus n minus one times d. Okay. Now, um, one thing we can do here is just plug things into the formula and solve it. And I'll do it that way first, and then we'll uh, talk about a more visual way to solve this problem. So I'm going to say a n equals sixteen. Okay, it is the sixth term. That's n equals six. Okay, so I'm saying n equals six. Plug that in here, and we get a6. I'll be more clear. I plug in 6 for n. I get a6 equals a1 plus 6 minus 1 times d. Okay, I know what a6 is. That's 16. I know what a1 is. That's negative 14. Uh, I know what 6 minus 1 is. That's 5. Okay, so now we balance the equation. We get 30 equals 5d, and 6 equals d. Okay. Uh, and that tells us that all you need to do to figure out term a2 is add 6 to negative 14. So a2 equals negative 8, a3 equals negative 2, a4 equals positive 4, and so on. We're just adding 6 each time. I sure hope this is right. Um, 10 and then 16. Great. Okay, so that worked out. Now, the visual way that I talked about doing this is just to uh, count right? It, it's not even worrying about an equation so much. It's just counting. Let's see how many jumps I take. One, two, three, four. I took five jumps, and I went up by a total of plus 30. So if I went up by 30 in five jumps, then that means each jump, well, uh, how many jumps did I say there were five? Yeah, there were five jumps, so that means each jump is six. And whether you like the visual way up here that we just talked about with jumping, or if you like, if you're a formulas person, you want to use the formulas, they both work. They're both fine.